All right, well, let's go back to our top story in the United States, where Vice President Kamala Harris has appeared at the opening night of the Democratic National Convention. She used her debut at the event to praise President Joe Biden for his leadership. He later took to the stage, calling on the party to rally behind Harris as the country's next leader. But outside the event center, thousands of protesters gathered to denounce the Democrats' support for Israel's war on Gaza. Arise international correspondent Adesu Agiwa Osagi is in Chicago, and she joins us now for updates. Adesua, hello, great to see you. I can see the sun has come up since we last saw you on the morning show. Uh, tell us a little, about, a little bit about yes. um, your expectation about the momentum behind Kamla to translate into votes at the poll. Well, it's lovely to see you this morning, Vimbai. And honestly, I'm not sure how much the momentum is going to translate where it matters the most, which is in the swing states. It seems that most of her momentum came in early on. It's very unlikely that the DNC will do much more than consolidate her base, which is very important. She needs to consolidate the base. She needs to get the people on the left, the people in the center, and the more moderates. And that's why you see someone like President Obama, who appeals to the moderate Democrats, going to come out today and appeal to those voters who may not have as much as a strong leaning with Kamala Harris. However, right now, she is not polling very well with white voters. She's not doing as well as Biden or Hillary Clinton did with white voters. And she's not doing as well with black men. And when it comes to swing states, Minnesota, Pennsylvania, those are 80, 90 percent white voters. So it's going to be tough. But I think the momentum right now, it's beautiful to see. It's amazing to actually be here on such a historic occasion. <laughs> yes, uh, you have referred to this as historic. Just how historic is it? Can you give us a bit of a background as to why? Hi, Shaito. How are you doing this morning? Now, this is going to be the first black woman, the first black Asian woman to head a, a major party in America for the, the top ticket, the presidential ticket. That is history in the making. And saying she's the first black woman makes you not even understand she's only the second woman. In Hillary Clinton's speech, she spoke about how Hillary Clinton's m mother was born here in Chicago and was born before women had the right to vote. Yet Hillary Hillary Clinton became the first woman to be the presidential nominee for a major party. And yesterday we saw represented we saw representatives call out on all the historical black leaders who have served America. Beyond Barack Obama, we had Jesse Jackson come out on stage. He's ailing. He didn't speak, but he was rolled out on stage. It was a very powerful moment. There were tears in the crowd. We had Maxine Waters come out. She spoke about Fannie Lou Hamer, who did a lot to end segregation and to make sure that black people had power within the Democratic Party. So the moment seemed very significant. People were talking about their children, what it meant to be black, what it meant to be a woman. And I think even even though Kamala Harris is not leaning into that, she's not leaning into her identity as much with her messaging, it's definitely historically significant out here in Chicago today. Sounds very sentimental. Well, what are we looking forward to today as day two of the DNC kicks off? And uh, furthermore, why should it matter to us here in Lagos, Nigeria without fuel? <laughs> <laughs> with our fuel crisis, I, I can just imagine. Now, I will say that the sun is, is rising behind me here. You can see the beautiful Chicago skyline. Today, we have two hometown heroes. That is Barack Obama, the former president, and Michelle Obama, his first lady, coming out to speak and appeal to the Democrats to support Kamala Harris. They know her very well. They know her personally. She handed out pizzas. She worked the grounds as a delegate to support Barack Obama. Obama when he was running for office. We expect them, you know, Chicago, they grew up here, they got married here, they lived here. Obama declared his intention to be president in 2008 here in Illinois. So I think that the most exciting thing we're going to see out of today is probably going to be the Obamas. And then we have Doug. I, people have said maybe we should call him the first dog if she wins <laughs> instead of the first man. But her husband is going to come. This week is their 10-year anniversary week, I believe. 
believe and he's going to come and appeal as a white man and a Jewish man and a husband for his wife to get support in the general elections. Now why does this matter to us in Nigeria? I think for me the messaging matters. Um, you know just like I mentioned earlier Hillary Clinton's mother was born in a time where women could not vote and she won the popular vote. She didn't win the election, but she won the popular vote to become president. It shows that in one generation, drastic change can happen. And I think the messaging coming out of the Democrats this week in particular is that we need to decide the story we want to tell ourselves as Americans. We need to come together regardless of our differences. And I think that's something that will resonate in Nigerians with all the tribal anguish and the, and the insecurity in the nation is that we need to determine for ourselves, what story we want to tell ourselves about Nigerians and how we are going to come together and the type of leaders that we believe can bring us together regardless of those differences and those issues that we face. Very well said, Adesua. Well, thousands of uh, peaceful pro-Palestinian protesters did march in Chicago at the opening of the, the DNC event happening. Did that affect the e event in whatsoever and are we expecting more of those protests to go on today? Yeah, so I will say in the early stages of the convention, you could still see some empty seats because it's quite difficult to actually get access to the convention center. Everything is barricaded. Everything is blocked. There are lots of road um, blockades. There are protective fences due to the protests. One of those protective fences was actually taken down um, by some protesters, and so arrests were being made. Now, there are thousands of pro Palestinian protesters right now, but there are less than expected. You know, some people had reported they we're expecting 800,000. It looks more like 3,000. The, the police and the security services are enforcing, you know, strict strict uh, abiding of law and order in, in in Chicago right now. However, they need to make sure that we do not have a situation that d develops into a 1986 situation when you had the anti-Vietnam protests. And so they are going to make sure they are very careful that no matter how strict they are in their enforcement, that they do not have any violence or any issues erupt because that will not abide well for the city. The mayor is a Democrat. He spoke yesterday and it will also not abide well for Kamala. So today, do we expect more protests? Likely. We had Blinken come out yesterday and say that Israel has accepted the terms of the Joe Biden peace deal and that they are just waiting for Hamas. However, I don't think that will dissuade the protesters we see out here in Chicago today. All right. And it's uh, Bella Osagi, international correspondent from Chicago. Thank you so much for giving us the blow by blow action from the Democrat National Convention. We look forward to catching up with you again a little bit later on in the day.